it an advantage to have a famous parent or grandparent, or does it add to the pressure to succeed? Nisharlan Sugulam comes from a family with a proud golfing heritage, and he chatted to Karishma about the influence that this has had on his own ambitions and dreams. When Karishma arrived at the Windsor Park course, she knew she wasn't going to find Nishalan Sugulam relaxing in the clubhouse. When he isn't out to the course offering mentorship and advice as the head pro, you'll find him upping his own game or working on his strength and fitness in the gym. A little bit more towards me. Core activated, good. Then let me give you some resistance, that's it. Nishalan Sugulam has had some pretty big shoes to fill, with his grandfather Papua Sugulam blazing a trail for Indian golfers in the apartheid era. His love for golf is embedded in his genes, and he has spent years honing his skills and ensuring that he is in athletic form to conquer the golf course. Let's catch up with him and find out what drives this pro golfer and what puts a swing in his step. Hi Nishalan, Karishma. Hi, nice to meet you Karishma. Welcome to Mela, lovely to meet you. I had no idea you had to be so fit to play golf. Thanks, Imagine. Thanks so much. I've experienced an injury going, going into a golf tournament and it's quite nasty. So the last thing you want as a pro golfer is to find out that you're leading the tournament and then going into the last round and picking up an injury. So the skill aspect is just a portion of what you should be practicing in golf. The, the gym, fitness and mental side of things are quite important. You know, Nishalan, my dad loves playing golf and I love spending Sunday mornings with him on the golf course. I never thought I would try my hand at golf, but since you're a pro and a pro coach, I'd love for you to give me some pointers. Well, it will be a pleasure to have you on the golf course. Hope you accept the challenge. Challenge accepted. Great. The late Siusanka Papua Sugulam was famous for his determination to play golf, no matter what opposition he faced from the apartheid government of the day. Having taught himself to play, Papua won the Natal Amateur Tournament when he was just 16. And after making his international debut at the British Open in 1959, he went on to win the Dutch Open the following year. By 1963, he had won this title for the third time, as well as winning the Natal Open back home, defeating Harold Henning. In 1965, he went up against Gary Player and won the tournament for a second time. His grandson, Nishalan, is still at the beginning of his career and has already played in a number of international golf tour events. Karishma knew that she would be getting some expert coaching. So, basically in your bag there's 14 clubs. Mm -hmm. Each club is designed to give you a, a different distance. Okay. So, what we're hitting with here is called a pitching wedge. It gives you a nice flight to a shot and it's going to get you to the, to the target we're going to be hitting for. Cool, let's do it. Okay, Karishma, since we're so good friends, I'm going to help you out with the tee here. And get Thank the you. ball rolling. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to take a practice shot just so you get the feel of things. To your shoulder. And back through. Oh, that's not too bad. Woohoo! I have to rethink this challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like as a young golfer following in the footsteps of your grandfather? It was unfortunate I never get to meet uh, Papua watch him play. For me as a youngster and, and attending uh, functions that Papua got awards in was definitely inspirational for me. It's high standards that he set. Uh, one of the best teaching pros in the world, David Ledbetter, did mention that when he was first turning pro, his dad told him that he should come to South Africa and if ever he wanted to learn something, Papua was the guy that, that he should watch. And, you know, for me, listening to that brought goosebumps because I thought to myself, if I, if I got to watch my granddad play, I'm sure I would have learned many things from him. Do you think the playing field has changed when it comes to different races being embraced by the golfing community? I think Papua focused at that time on nothing else but winning tournaments. And mentally, he got through all of that. So at this moment in time in South Africa, and I've been fortunate to be placed at a golf course where I'm teaching, and there's different races that come uh, for lessons. On tour itself, everyone helps. There's no color. Everyone helps with tips and stuff like that. So. I think there's no, there's no colour involved in golf right now in South Africa and it's going in the right direction. Nishalan, I've accepted your challenge and I've exceeded even my own expectations and now I think I'm ready to play a whole of golf. Did I say challenge accepted? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Good shot! Yes! Nishalan, I think I've got this one in the bag. Hole in one. Where's a good place to park? I need my seat belt. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Nice shot. That's not too bad. It's good. Well done. I'll have the pleasure of taking the ball out. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Well done. You have won numerous awards and played on international courses. Take me through some of the highlights of your career. Karishma, you know, for me, every time I step onto the golf course, I just want to enjoy myself. But a turning point in my career came at Pinnacle Point when I was playing there in the pro shootout. And whoever's played Pinnacle would know the ninth hole at Pinnacle is pretty tough. You have the ocean on the right-hand side and the green is on your left, so there's no room for error. And I came into the final hitting a pitching wedge to about 152 meters. I hit the ball to the right of the target and some good force brought it back into the target about four meters onto the flexing. I went on to actually win that event and certainly helped my mental side of the game. I've had an absolute blast, but on a day like today, I think I am best suited for the 19th hole. So should we go grab a drink? You got the right term. Let's make our way there. Papua died in 1978, never receiving the honor he deserved during his lifetime. Only after his death was he awarded the Order of Ikamanga and inducted into the South African Golf Hall of Fame. His life and career have also been covered in a documentary film and in a recent biography, while a dramatized version is planned for the big screen. Cheers, Nishalem. Thank you so much for that. Well done again on the challenge. Now, where do you see yourself as a golfer in the next five years? I want to carry on with my granddad's legacy. Uh, he did come runner-up in the SA Open, so for me, my challenge is to go on and win that and one day live up to that name. And there you have it, Nishal and Sugulam not only has golfing down to a tee, but he's an all-rounder with a grounded history and a bright future. Cheers to that, Nishalan. Cheers.